Earth scientists study the four major spheres of Earth processes. The hydrosphere, which involves all water on Earth in solid, liquid or vapor form. The biosphere, which involves all life on Earth. The geosphere, which involves the solid part of the Earth from its surface to its core. And the atmosphere, which involves the layer of gas that envelops the Earth. Earth scientists study processes that occur in the intersection between the atmosphere, hydrosphere, biosphere and geosphere. In this unit, we will focus on applications of systems of linear equations, systems of inequalities, and matrix operations that Earth scientists use to find and manage Earth's energy resources. Fossil energy sources, including coal, oil, and natural gas, are non-renewable resources that formed when prehistoric organisms died and were subjected to high temperatures and pressures after being gradually buried by different layers of rock. Different kinds of organic materials buried at varying temperatures and pressures will produce different kinds of fossil fuels. Coal is a combustible rock with a high carbon content. Many of the world's coal deposits formed millions of years ago during the aptly named Carboniferous period, when the earth was covered with huge swampy forests which eventually formed layers of coal. The oil we use today was formed in ancient oceans from the burial of large amounts of plankton that fell to the bottom of the ocean and were buried and heated over time. Extreme temperatures and large amounts of plant-based debris are more favorable for the production of lighter oils and natural gas. Once the oil and natural gas is formed, it migrates through the pores in the rock until it gets trapped under impermeable rock units. These locations, known as oil reservoirs, are where we find oil today. One kind of geologic trap that leads to the formation of an oil reservoir is an anticline. Anticlinal traps are layers of rock that are folded in an arch, where the rocks inside the arch are older than the rocks on the outside of the arch. If the younger rocks on the outside of the anticline are impermeable, they can trap oil and gas migrating through the older permeable rocks on the inside. The limbs of an anticline can be represented by two linear equations, which help Earth scientists identify the best location for drilling a well, which is typically through the top of the anticline. How do we know where to drill? In the past, the oil and gas industry relied on geologic observations that could be made from Earth's surface. Since then, geophysicists have developed seismic techniques to visualize rock layers inside the Earth and determine optimal well locations. Geophysicists generate seismic waves that travel into the Earth and reflect off rock units. These reflected seismic waves are recorded by geophones at the Earth's surface. Geophysicists solve large systems of linear equations using the data collected by these geophones to interpret the geometry of rock units inside of the Earth. Natural gas is an abundant resource across the U.S., and new extraction methods have led to a dramatic rise in natural gas from organic-rich shale rock units, making America the world's leading natural gas producer since 2009. Shale has high porosity and low permeability that traps gas molecules in its pores. Natural gas can now be extracted from shale using unconventional wells that are drilled along the rock unit instead of vertically across it. Similar to the methods used to determine the shape of anticlines, we can locate optimal drilling paths using systems of linear equations. Unconventional wells in shales also utilize a technique called hydraulic fracturing, or fracking, in which drillers force pressurized fluids, like water, into a formation to create tiny cracks in the rock called fractures that serve as an open pathway for natural gas molecules to escape the rock unit. Fracking a well requires millions of gallons of fresh water. Although this water can be recycled across multiple wells, this technique can impact freshwater supplies. My name is Julie Mansfield and I'm a geoscientist for ExxonMobil. I currently work in our Permian Basin Business Unit, looking for the best places to drill horizontal wells in West Texas. Every day I use my geoscience knowledge combined with linear equations and matrix math to determine where to drill wells, what path they need to take, and even pre and post drill analyses for core cuttings and anything else that we want to look at. We collect data using uh, several different methods and tools, including analog data from outcrops or well logs nearby, or we'll drill new wells and take core well logs and even use seismic data. We'll then integrate all of that into a model that we use to try to find the best places to drill. 
The best part of my job is really that every day is something new and different. I often get to go to the field and work with people that are out there. I also get to go to conferences and field courses and do a lot of really uh, in-depth hands-on work, and I love that. There is no doubt that coal, oil, and natural gas have brought about countless benefits and advancements. However, we're burning through them approximately one million times faster than nature can produce them. Eventually, we will run out. Additionally, the carbon dioxide and pollution associated with our current energy system have many negative impacts on the planet. Renewable energy resources, including hydropower, wind power, and solar power, have the potential to create a more secure, sustainable source of energy to accommodate the world's growing population. Hydropower captures energy from flowing water. Hydroelectric power plants are usually located on or near a water source, like a river or dammed reservoir. Challenges associated with hydropower are maintenance and restoration required by many of the world's aging dams, the world's dwindling freshwater supply in some regions, and impacts of dams on their surrounding ecosystem. Wind power captures energy from moving air or wind. The power curve of a wind turbine is a graph that indicates how large the electrical power output will be for the turbine at different wind speeds, and can be represented by systems of inequalities where the curve represents viable wind speeds for wind energy capture. Solar power captures energy from sunlight. While sunlight is plentiful and freely available, only certain geographical regions of the world get enough direct power from the sun for long enough to generate usable power from this source. Renewable resources have historically been cost prohibitive, especially for low-income families who can spend half of their income on energy costs. Today, renewable energy is more expensive than fossil fuels. However, CO2 emissions caps and pollution regulation could reduce the difference in the price of renewable energy compared to fossil fuels for everyone. While there is no energy generating technology that is truly carbon free, not all energy resources are created equal with respect to their carbon footprint. Many of the renewable energy CO2 emissions come from the production, transportation, and maintenance of equipment needed to capture energy. Although renewable energy sources still have a carbon footprint, it is vastly smaller than that of their non-renewable counterparts. As the world's energy demand continues to increase, traditional energy supplies will not. Peak oil, natural gas, and peak coal are the theorized point in time when the maximum rate of extraction of each resource is reached, after which the energy supply is expected to enter terminal decline, which can be modeled by a system of inequalities. Today, world coal reserves are on the decline, but peak oil and peak natural gas curves continue to be redrawn by new technologies that allow for the extraction of once inaccessible reserves. CO2 emissions, cost, and energy demands can all be modeled using systems of linear equations, systems of inequalities, and matrix operations to find individualized solutions for each unique set of conditions. Our use of fossil fuels for energy is depleting our finite non-renewable energy reserves and negatively impacting our environment. But our growing global population will require an ever-increasing amount of clean energy. Earth scientists play a major role in the exploration and production of energy resources and the sustainability and environmental issues facing the energy industry. Working to understand how to be good stewards of Earth's energy resources is critical to providing safe and reliable energy resources far into the future. <laughs>